Hey, uh, my name is Matt Abbott. I'm head of growth at Swanky, um, and I want to introduce you to another Matt, who's the director of agency par partnerships at Just Uno. Uh, Matt, if you'd like to give yourself a quick intro. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, like Matt said, uh, my name is Matt Bingham, I'm director of agency partnerships at Just Uno. I help uh, all of our top uh, agencies leverage our platform for higher conversion rates, lead capture, and uh, better on-site messaging with the Just Uno platform. Thank you. So in our recent ebook, um, which is the complete guide to internationalization, we discussed the importance of conversion rate optimization and how it's a, a valuable work stream for business growth in different markets. Um, in your opinion, Matt, can you can you give us an overview of why monitoring conversion rate is so important for online retailers? Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, CRO has been a, a growing topic over the years. You know, I think we all understand basic conversions. Um, but really optimizing the visitor journey, the visitor experience, uh, and then doing action based upon intent or behavior um, has really been taking off over the past couple of years. And especially when you're a larger merchant that has several domains in several countries, um, you wanna make sure that you're doing effective conversion rate optimization um, and test your theories quickly. And that's really been kind of the, the MO of our platform as we, uh, we like to really advise people on ways to engage more of your visitors um, with relevant messages during their, their session so that either they uh, join your marketing list or they purchase in that session. Um, I think it's really valuable for merchants because um, it's not like a, a box or a big box store or like a, a brick and mortar store. You don't have that physical connection or human connection. Uh, you're working through a screen, so you got to find ways to engage people um, that are pretty much anonymous, right? They're all behind a screen. So you got to really uh, see what people are doing and leverage the data that you have to uh, show the right type of message. Yeah, it's so true. I, I like what you said there about data. So um, kind of from the, the CRO programs that you've run, you know, I guess mm -hmm. there's two main elements, aren't there? There's there's mm -hmm. the learning part, mm -hmm. part um, and then there's driving revenue. Mm -hmm. Have you got any examples of kind of the data that people should be looking for before they embark on a test? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think as marketers, you you have to learn and understand data. Um, but like I mentioned before, you know, you're not in a retail store. If someone comes into a cake store, starts looking around, you could say, hey, you know, here's some suggested cakes that you might want to buy. Um, as marketers, you look at data, trends, behaviors, what kind of actions people are doing. Um, I always like to say, look at intent. You know, if somebody's come to your site several times, they've added something to the cart, they're on the cart page, like to me, that's intent. And that intent is really backed up by data. You know, you can see what they're doing in your Shopify platform and some of your other tools that you have on your site. So data is super important. Um, it can be a little bit um, exhausting or it can also be very uh, a rabbit hole kind of sense where you go down. Uh, but if you look at a lot larger trends of your, your online traffic and what people are doing, um, you can take that data, put on your promo hat, put on your messaging hat and say, okay, this segment of people are doing X, Y, Z. So let's try doing an upsell or a bundle or guiding them towards something. Um, again, you know, you don't, don't really know what that one-to-one -one connection is as much sometimes. So you have to use the data that you have to then test your theories and um, you know, that's really the value of uh, data in my site because, you know, it's it's there, it's might as well leverage it and, and it's the best way to make uh, a decision. It is. And how quickly can people act? Like, is it is it real time or is there a bit of a delay to come up with a hypothesis or is it mm -hmm. data? I can get it going. Yeah, you know, and this is kind of where CRO kind of differs in, in some regards. You know, there's some CRO practices where you're like, developing landing pages and creating a visitor flow and journey, which does have a really big impact. You, you need to do that. Um, but those kind of take longer periods of time to develop sometimes, right? Um, with our kind of mindset of CRO, you know, using banners, pop-ups, maybe corner slide outs, maybe some effective messages to certain segments allow you to rapidly t test those theories, right? You have a hypothesis, you can launch some sort of message um, without having to do a full landing page rebuild, right? You can test that theory. And if it works, then you can expand upon it. Um, I think that go to market uh, quickly component with your hypothesis 
um, is really important, especially in digital marketing, because trends can come and then they can go just as fast as they got there. So um, I'm not saying that one is better than the other. I think they both are valid and they need to be need to take place. But if you can find some low hanging fruit or some easy wins where, you know, maybe there's a banner that we put on this page to my paid ad traffic that are doing some sort of intent on, after they get there, some click uh, click through rates with like adding items to the cart, then, you know, test that banner, see if it works. And if it doesn't, then you can just move on. So um, yeah, I think uh, try to find easier wins and easy implementation with things like the Just Video platform that you can leverage. And then for more deeper long-term conversion rate growth, that's where you need to leverage uh, agencies, people like Swanky to help, kind of help you out there. So, yeah, we, we do the same. So um, we'll categorize tests, you know, kind of the initial ideas, those are the low hanging fruit, quick wins, et cetera. Then we'll have initial, so take a bit more time, bit more insight, bit more informed. Um, and then we'll have some innovative ideas. So some kind of bit more far out and take quite a lot of work. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you have to kind of, see what's um what's the priority i mean for, as an agency we want to deliver value so it's mm -hmm. it's all about kind of commercial return for us um mm -hmm. and at the same time helping our merchants be you know better and really at the forefront of their kind of their industry or particular business. yeah well, um, and I, I would say as well you know with an agency like you guys um having that type of roadmap is really valuable to merchants you know um you can always talk about easy wins but that easy wins is just going to maybe give you a couple revenue boosts for a couple of weeks or months. Uh, that type of long-term growth, um, mm -hmm. I think, is really beneficial when you have experts like you helping out. I think uh, too often I see merchants try to take that that project on themselves, and then they get frustrated and nothing really happens. So I think there's times where you can, as a merchant, take it on yourself. Uh, but things like long-term growth long-term projects that have beneficial conversion rate lift over months and months, uh, that's when you need to come to someone like Swanky or other partners that uh, can help you out, so. Yeah, I mean, I'd say the same thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so one of, one of the, the conversations that we always have with merchants is, you know, am I gonna have to invest a lot of money in a CRO program? Mm -hmm. what, what, what would you be your response to that? Yeah, you know, um, I think, you know, with that type of investment, I think you, you have to understand that um, there's two components. One is that it is a lot of work sometimes when you are redeveloping the visitor experience on the website and how they uh, interact with your website. I think that's going to take some time to build and it does require a lot of hours. Um, but that type of investment, um, when you get something that works and it's something substantial to your brand that can you know, work for 18 months, you know, 24 months onward, um, I think it's worth that type of investment. You know, I think um, a lot of times merchants get a little scared around uh, taking that investment. But I think if you're serious about growth and you're serious about taking a, a, a bigger step as a brand, um, you need to invest in CRA, you need to invest in visitor experience because, um, you know, that's really where people buy, you know, people buy on your website. They don't buy through email. They don't buy through SMS. They do click through and then buy, but where do they buy? They buy on the website. So uh, that type of investment is really key. Um, you're always going to have to continually update SEO practices, uh, maybe tweaks to design and landing pages based upon seasonality or needs. Uh, but when it comes to like conversion rate strategy, um, you have to invest, you have to look for uh, something that works for your brand. And um, that's the cool thing that I love about e-commerce is that every brand is so different. Um, and it's always kind of a fun challenge to figure it out. Um, you know, we have mom and pop shops all the way to like, you know, big companies, um, and they all have different price points, different visitor experience, visit, uh, different uh, interactions and brand stories. Um, so got to find what works for best, but I think it's always a good investment. Uh, for longer term growth than, you know, sometimes just those easy revenue boosts for, you know, a month or two period. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, I want to pick up on the word different there because um, we're talking about internationalization, aren't we? So yeah. different countries have, um, kind of, or users will have different browsing habits, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, what, or if any advice could you give to merchants who are kind of running CRO or testing programs in different markets? Yeah, you know, like you said, uh, every country and, and culture has a different 
browsing preference, different experiences on website. Um, I think what's interesting that I've seen around some of our brands that have international sites is that um, there's kind of some pillar things that are universal for all. It's like people like stories, mm -hmm. people like knowing a brand, um, whether that's learning through your website or learning through your email campaigns. I think that kind of storytelling component is always really valuable. And even though uh, that type of storytelling experience um, might be a little bit different, you know, in certain countries, that foundation of it should be applied. Um, I think what's interesting with uh, when you look at our platform and internationalization, um, something that's also very universal is, is showing the right, you know, promo or message to people at the right time. Um, you know, maybe in the U.S. you could be a little bit more aggressive because people are you know, a little bit more spend happy here um, than other countries. But um, if you're showing effective messages and promos at the right time to people maybe in France or, you know, in China or whatever it may be, um, you know, I think that's still an effective strategy because it's all about the psychology of the buying habit, right? Like if, uh, again, I'll use this example, someone clicked through a paid ad and they've been through to your site a couple times and uh, they join your newsletter and, you know, they keep adding something to the cart, like that's intent, no matter what country you're in, that's intent, right? So maybe some sort of promo or message to that person during that, that one of those sessions can get them over that finish line. So um, yeah, there's like foundational things that you can apply to any country domain or culture, um, but you're just gonna have to test out, you know, can I be a little bit more salesy here or do I have to kind of tame it back and have a more longer play before that first purchase? So. Um, that's the value of looking at your data. And that's the value of your know, hypothesis and going to market really quickly, testing it out, seeing if it works, and then making some tweaks and changes. Mm. Just making it, making the user feel like that experience is really personal to them, isn't it? Really. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, um, for example, in the UK, we might have um, a picture of a, a beach from from Cornwall, but in in Italy, you might want um, a background of the Amalfi Coast. Yeah, why not? I think um, people look for that nowadays. Um, you know, and I think it's the same with like product recommendations or upsells or cross sells. Like people are looking for suggestions, especially when they're still getting to know your brand. Um, and even things like that example of showing uh, maybe a beach or something that's relevant to their geolocation, while they might not voice that um, psychologically, I think it's it's kind of a more of a comforting thing that helps them feel a little bit more established with your brand, even though they haven't fully gotten to know you yet. So um, yeah, I totally agree, man. Good. Um, <laughs> I feel like sometimes personalization though, it's got a bit of a reputation of being really difficult to do and kind of out of reach for some merchants, mm -hmm. um, but actually it's quite it's quite simple to achieve. Like, yeah. um, have, you, have you got any examples that you've seen across your merchants of where you know something simple has been really effective? Yeah, you know, I think your example is one of them. Um, I, I think the uh, the email cadences that people use in different countries has also been very uh, interesting to watch with some of our brands. Um, you know, we released a, an AI upsell tool about a year ago, and it's a, an AI tool that helps with upsell cross sells. Um, you can strategically place like product carousels or um, maybe corner slide outs or banners that have uh, like a tiles of like 10 different items, like, you you know, you also might like this. Um, really, the benefit of this tool that I like about it is that you're letting the AI and the machine learning determine what needs to be placed in that carousel, right? Like, that's the hardest part is like, okay, I'm trying to personalize for, um, you know, this segment of visitors, but what do I show them? Um, you might know where to place it, but you don't know what to put in that carousel. And that's where I think sometimes it's easier to let, you know, machine learning or some best tools that you find out there um, do the heavy lifting of determining what needs to be personalized or shown to that visitor because you might know where to place it. So I think it's good to explore what's out there in the e-commerce world, um, see what people are using. Um, you know, personalization, I, I think, like you said, has kind of the stigma of being just like a really big project and it's going to take a lot of time and effort. but um, I think if you could find effective tools that have um, ways to leverage data and personalize, you know, what needs to be shown in email or on site or on in your text messages, um, I think that's going to be 
uh, kind of a, a bigger trend that's going to take off in the next couple of years. But um, I, I think personalization creates more comfort, um, creates a more ease of use towards purchase, and maybe even creates a bigger basket size. You know, if you're doing a product recommendation to me uh, on the cart or checkout page, maybe I go from a $50 cart to a $75 cart with, you know, some relevant product recommendations. So, yeah, you know, I, I think don't be afraid of it and use data to help you personalize. Um, I think that's been kind of a reoccurring theme with this ebook. So, yeah, yeah, it's so important. And it, whilst there's a lot, obviously, a lot of um, kind of um, responsibility on the platform, you still need to have a person who is looking mm -hmm. at data and learning from it and not only working out what the immediate actions are, but actually working out how it then ties in with the rest of the customer journey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think um, as much as AI and machine learning is taking over in terms of like helping with those decisions, I think it's still dependent upon a person to determine when, where, and who sees it based upon you know, your own analytics, I mean, they're your own thought process, right? I mean, um, you look at data and then you make a decision. So, um, yeah, I don't think that human component is ever going to go away. So, <laughs> no, no, it's not. Um, it is. And, I, and I think kind of we can probably finish off with, you know, our, our pro tip, which is learn as much as you can before you launch from an mm -hmm. organization perspective, like get familiar with browsing habits, reading habits, discuss, like decision cycles, you know, any language challenges. I think you can never really do um, too much research or much mm -hmm. too much research about the market that they're either um, kind of just breaking into or really trying to kind of um, ex expand or take up more, you know, market share. Mm -hmm. um, so look, Matt, thank you so much for that. Um, for anybody who's watched and would like further information around how to leverage conversion rate optimization in your international strategy, you can download the complete guide to internationalization ebook now. Cool. Thanks, Matt. Thank you very much.